That's it. We're ready to shut the passage ways. And we'd like to say goodbye to everyone and thanks. Today, I'm taking back home these outstanding astronauts, Scott and Misha. Well, so thank you all for the good work. It's been a long time. The former crewmen, especially Scott and Misha, have got tremendous achievements during their one-year mission. We're really grateful to the crew for its work and also want to thank the engineers and managers of our mission control centers in Houston, Moscow, Munich, and Cuba. Thank you for your work and good luck and goodbye. Okay, let's say goodbye and we'll leave. That's it. Thank you for everything. Everything will be tickety-boo. Make yourself comfortable. Bye. Bye. Goodbye. See you on the ground. Goodbye. Goodbye. Until the next time. We'll see you on the ground, Misha. Take care. Goodbye. Goodbye, Cameron. Goodbye. Goodbye. It was great working with you. My friend. Take care. Goodbye. Great work. Take care, guys. Goodbye. Where's my brush? A few photos taken as mementos, and we can close the passageways. But Mikhail Kornienko performs another important ritual, saying goodbye to his space home, where he stayed for a year. Station. Goodbye. Okay, let's go, Sergei. The crew gets into the spacecraft and shuts the passageways. There's three hours prior to the undocking. This time is spent on putting on the in-flight spacesuits making themselves comfortable in their prone beds and checking all the spacecraft systems. At 4.03 by Moscow time, the Soyuz with the astronauts aboard successfully undocked from the ISS. Observing disconnection with the ISS, best wishes stay. Goodbye, Yuri Ivanovich. See you on the ground. Thank you. Well, we, we're at the airfield waiting for the departure. The first plane is taking off now. At 9.30 is the first one, and then the others one by one. The pilots worked out a plan, as it should be so well. Everything is scheduled. Thanks. The deputy head of the Cosmonaut Training Center is talking on the phone with another mission control center located in Moscow. All the participants of the search and rescue operation are constantly exchanging data. The Mission Control Center reports on the spacecraft deorbiting. Everything is proceeding according to plan, and the helicopters are ready to take off on call. I've gained weight over the last couple of years. Is it all right? No, no, like this. The mask is obligatory. It'll save you from freezing. The journalists are also getting ready for the flight in their own way. The safety harnesses must be fastened, as the photos and videos of landings are always done with an open door. The places are chosen in advance so that all could capture the desired views. An hour prior to the landing, the helicopters depart and fly directly to the landing region. 
At the same moment in space, the most curious things are happening. The two-hour undocked flight of the space vehicle has come to an end. And the space propulsion system produces a retrograde burn necessary for the Soyuz deorbiting. Half an hour later, the spacecraft has the habitation module and onboard systems section disconnected. And the crew faces the most dangerous stage of landing. We can observe the passive re-entry capsule. That is what it looks like from inside the capsule. The crewmen feel the impact of sustained acceleration that amounts to 4G, and if the capsule has a free flight trajectory, its level can be even higher. Surrounding the capsule is a plasma sheath, the temperature of which rises up to 2,000 degrees Celsius. That causes a break of the radio link, and in this case, one can enjoy the magnificent view through the window. For several minutes, the descending capsule is approaching Earth's surface with lightning speed. After the re-entry deceleration, the parachutes open. Firstly, the auxiliary one, and then the main one. Here starts the smooth phase of landing, and at that moment, everything is already under control. The capsule with the astronauts is being accompanied by airplanes and helicopters by the landing site. That's a great example of aerobatic maneuvering, to say the least of it, as more than 10 crafts are hugging the ground in the same small area. A strong wind has blown the capsule several kilometers further from the aim point. But in a couple of minutes, almost all the participants of the search and rescue operation have reached it. When we start the evacuation, step aside. The Sergei Volkov is the first one to be helped out of the capsule. Then came Scott Kelly's turn. Hail to American heroes. Scott, well done. Mikhail Kornienko is the last to leave the capsule. Now his one-year mission can be considered completed. Mikhail Borisovich, welcome home. Okay, take him. Careful, put him down. Down, down. 